Hello and welcome back. We've been moving along quite nicely here, just finishing up S3 and EC2, two of the three what I would call core AWS services. Now let's activate RDS and DynamoDB and we can jump in here and start to talk about AWS's database offerings. So RDS and DynamoDB, that will be AWS Essentials Section 6. Specifically, we're going to talk about an overview of AWS's core database offerings, a conceptual review of SQL versus NoSQL databases, database pricing overview, provisioning and connecting to an RDS database, and a brief introduction or overview of SSH tunneling. So without further ado, let's jump into databases lesson one with RDS and DynamoDB basics. In this lesson, we're gonna talk specifically about RDS versus DynamoDB, SQL versus NoSQL, and finish up with a pricing overview of each. So in the world of databases, there are two main categories. There's relational databases known as SQL and non-relational databases known as NoSQL. Amazon offers services for both types of databases. RDS is for SQL databases and DynamoDB is for NoSQL databases. Now, if we look over here in the AWS console under databases, you're going to see RDS and DynamoDB. So RDS, let me click on it here. RDS or relational database service for an essentials or simplified definition, RDS is a SQL database service that provides a wide range of SQL database options to select from. For example, there are many different SQL options that include Amazon Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. So if I click here on getting started, we can see here I can select between all these various options or what are called database or RDS engines. So by clicking on any one of these, I can then select on various options for each. In terms of AWS's definition, Amazon Relational Database Service or Amazon RDS is a web service that makes it easier to set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud. It provides cost-efficient, resizable, which is a key component of this, resizable capacity for an industry-standard relational database and manages common database administration tasks. So one of the great things about using RDS on Amazon Web Service is that you don't have to set up and maintain the server yourself. It does that for you on the back end. You are just using this as a service as opposed to having to set up your own server, install the software yourself, and manage the underlying operating system. For DynamoDB, the essentials definition would be DynamoDB is a NoSQL database service which unlike RDS, DynamoDB does not provide other NoSQL software options. So with RDS, you had a bunch of different engines that you could choose from. With DynamoDB, this is the only NoSQL software option. And it does replace, or is very similar to MongoDB, CassandraDB, or Oracle NoSQL. In terms of the AWS definition, Amazon DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for all applications that need consistent single digit millisecond latency at any scale. So it's extremely fast. It's flexible data model and reliable performance make it a great fit for mobile, web, gaming, ad tech, IoT, and many other applications. Now, in terms of the difference between SQL and NoSQL, and therefore RDS and DynamoDB, there's just some basic differences you need to be aware of. Now, this is not a database course, so I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty of each, but if you're trying to figure out which one you may wanna use, or this is more to give you a general understanding of what is what, RDS, or SQL database structures, stores related data in tables using columns and rows. So, very much a traditional database setup. And it's typically used for structured data 
such as a contact list. Whereas DynamoDB being NoSQL, this stores related data in JSON-like name value documents, typically used for non-structured data such as cataloging documents. So there's really a large difference in the way that these two databases store their information. And again, in the constructs of this AWS Essentials course, I'm not going to go into any more detail about the two. So moving on, let's look at the pricing and cost overview for RDS and DynamoDB. For RDS, there is free tier use available, but it's only available for all RDS options except Aurora. So if you do want to use RDS and use the free tier option, you cannot use Aurora. You must select one of the other engines. So how are you charged for using RDS? Well, pricing depends on one, the engine that you choose. So whether you choose Amazon Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB, and so on. Next, the instance class. Now this is very similar to what we talked about with EC2 instance types. So this is your processor, your RAM, all the various components that make up the hardware that is going to run the database. Also purchasing terms, very much like EC2, you have on-demand and reserved databases. Database storage, the amount of storage that you need. The IOPS involved with the storage. Also data transfer in and out of RDS. And as always, make sure to check out this link here before you do any major use of RDS to make sure that you understand what you are being charged for. Moving on to DynamoDB, there is free tier use available. And for DynamoDB, you are charged for the provisioned throughput capacity that you require, indexed data storage, DynamoDB streams, reserved capacity, and data transfer in and out of DynamoDB. And again, you should make sure to fully understand the cost and pricing structure by going to DynamoDB pricing before you do any heavy lifting in DynamoDB. So to sum up again, one thing that I really want you to take away from this is that for database offerings, there are two. There is RDS and DynamoDB. RDS is for relational or SQL databases, and DynamoDB is for non-relational or NoSQL databases. And with that, we will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.